Welcome to Game News for August 17, 2013, where nothing is what it seems and the seams need stitches. We're your tailors who are going to sew up your week in gaming news. Mike? Hello? Grover? Dude! And of course, moi, Chris. So while Nintendo is hurting with Wii U sales, having sold not even 200,000 of their new systems in the last four months, Microsoft is seeing their sales of their own 360 slow as well, getting close to only 100,000 per month, which is half of what it was this time last year. But even then, it remains the top console seller in July on its 31st straight month on the top of the list. But Microsoft is busy on the PC front as well as Windows 8.1 goes live in mid-October. Lots of updates on a lot of its apps including SkyDrive and Explorer 11. Oh boy, I can't wait to not buy Windows 8. Skype will also be a part of the standard bundle of Windows Family from now on from the sounds of it as it will be integrated into Windows 8 as well. If you can't get enough Halo, and I mean the lore itself, in the form of books and short stories as opposed to jumping around, throwing grenades, and getting headshots while screaming ha ha noob into the microphone with your undoubtedly high pitched voice as example which betrays you for the prepubescent teen you really are then Eric Island is probably a familiar name to you since he's the guy who wove the stories behind the franchise together and the news has trickled out that he's now jumped on with Amazon for part of the team working on their own game branch uh, there's no official word on what it is he'll really be doing aside from the fact that his new business card reads as director of narrative design however Couch Campus caught a quote from him saying, I can't talk about specifics, but I wouldn't be there unless something cool was brewing. By the way, my Halo gamer rant betrays me for the terrible Halo player I really am if it makes you feel better. Feel free to forward all hate mail to prettymike at live.com where it will be thusly deleted. Deleted. <laughs> if you do hate mail me, I can show it on the air. So, that could be something kind of fun. Mm, well, Michael, I have his own show about his <laughs> hate mail bag. <laughs> we don't have to worry about hate mail because that net picks on us constantly. That smells fantastic to us. Mm. Like, thing ever. Anyway, <laughs> while EA discovers more sport groups are cutting their ties with EA's feature games after the troubles of the NCAA lawsuit with athletes, Southeastern Conference, the SEC, the Pac-12, and the Big Ten have all moved from their relationships with EA. Yay! On the flip side, though, the EA Humble Bundle has been rampaging with over 1.3 bundles purchased with over $6 million spent. Million bundles. Oh, 1.3 million bundles? <laughs> yeah. Did you just say 1.3 bundles? <laughs> <laughs> with over 1.3 million bundles purchased, with over 6 million spin. The bundles include Dead Space 1 and 3, Mirror's Edge, Crisis 2 Maximum Edition, Medal of Honor, Burnout Paradise, the Ultimate Box, Battlefield 3, and the Sims 3 Starter Pack, which includes Late Night Expansion Pack and High End Lot stuff, which honestly, in my opinion, most of the High End Lot stuff is pretty worthless. Uh, all the proceeds are being split between Humble's crew and five different charities, of which you can choose how much each one gets. But EA isn't getting a dime in it, and yay, that pleases me. I don't know why. Maybe I'm thinking <laughs> me. More evidence that they are trying to improve their image, though there's been issues with Origin getting some of the games registered. And I have noticed that when it says that you can't register right now, Origin doesn't know what it's talking about. Origin is drunk. Try anyway. And if it doesn't work, try again later. Their servers have not been paired for that, apparently. Gasp! Now that DuckTales Remastered has launched, and it was making waves even before it launched, Castle Illusion HD will be following right after in the first week of September for the PlayStation Network, Xbox Live, and PC. Total asking price $15, so about the same price as DuckTales. Pre-orders for the PlayStation Network version will get a free version of the original Sega Genesis version of Castle of Illusion. And speaking of DuckTales, the special edition retail version for the PS3 will be available this Tuesday on the 20th, and I believe it comes with a collectible DuckTales pen. Not like writing pen, but a pen that you can pin to like a shirt. Mm -hmm. And Square Enix confirmed 12 more layoffs at Crystal Dynamics, where the last Tomb Raider was made, though they're clarifying the Tomb Raider won't be affected, and the new team was actually working on a new franchise. And not to be the end of the ongoing layoffs in the gaming world, Tryon Worlds announced that at, on top of last week's shutting down the San Diego studio and moving the remains of the team over to Redwood City that we were talking about, they're also closing the doors on the publishing office of Guildford UK. Though again, Tryon claims that there would be no noticeable effect to European sport and releases of future games in that territory. And Zynga, never to be outdone, has three more executives heading out the door. Yes, these are three different people than the last time we spoke about them. This time it's Tech Chief Kadir Lee, Operations Chief David Coe, and People Chief okay, that's not her actual title, but still People Chief Colleen McCreary. It's been vague, but this time it sounds like this was indeed a decision made by Zynga instead of the execs jumping ship for once. But that's also according to Zynga's new CEO, Don Matrick, who's got a history of putting spin on things. Okay, here's 
a plus one. Valve's former Jason Haltman, known for his work to bring EA and Activision to sell their game on Steam, is now worked for Microsoft. After having left Valve earlier this year, being picked up to help Windows Live seems like a smart choice for uh, Microsoft. Not to mention the upcoming Xbox One with its online heavy system. Speaking of Xbox One, Phil Spencer and Major Nelson spoke on a podcast about how the new system changes everything we know about entertainment. It's a pretty <gasps> lofty claim if you ask me. Uh, they went on to prove this statement, and I'm saying prove in quotes, by saying he can access his games, his TV, and his online movies all with one box now. Uh, by the way, I can do this with my Wii U, so changing everything means needing only one remote now, I guess, except I can control my TV with my Wii U gamepad. So that thought's out the window. But it is a voice hand motion remote, so I guess that's sort of techy if that wasn't already happening on the Xbox 360. Speaking of Kinect, Microsoft confirmed the device won't need to be on all the time to run most of the games or to function readily enough, while a separate report claims red rings are a thing of the past because the new system will monitor itself for overheating and pull back its power usage and kick up its fans if it starts getting too hot until it has cooled down, and that's actually kind of cool. Great, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't stop you through that, Dave. And now for some rapid fire, starting Brandon Lee. As if Saints Row didn't have enough pre-order bonuses now, GameStop and EB pre-orders made before 22nd of August also not only get the Commander-in-Chief edition goodies, the three new exclusive skins of Abraham Lincoln, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama. Now some impersonator voices come with that, I could see that being pretty hilarious. Galactic Brain was a promising turn-based strategy game from Slangfic Games is no longer. After only five months on the Windows Store has been pulled with no real reason stated by Microsoft why this happened. There doesn't seem to be any mention of it restarting or any new Galactic Rain games in the future. What the hell? Yeah, just bam and it's gone. Oof, oof. So, even more fighting game community news for you guys is both FK Digital's Chaos Code and the obscure anime crossover turned obscure anime fighting game Aquapaza are both scheduled to be coming to North America soon, on the PlayStation 3 of course, as well as a surprising patch update for Persona 4 Arena that includes bounces and two new characters. Say this right, Juan Dao Zing Wang, or also known as King of Combat, which is much easier to say, has a petition going on at change.org to bring it to North America, but it looks like it's not going to get very far, sadly, with just barely over 700 votes after a good two months. So, Plus, Capcom has stated Ultra Street Fighter 4 will be headed to PC with Steam support instead of Windows Live this time around, as about the same time as the launch of the console versions, or around the same time. And a bit more of Capcom news is they're releasing the Capcom Essentials Pack that drops Devil May Cry 4, a stripped-down Super Street Fighter 4, a stripped-down Dead Rising 2, last year's Fan Torn Resident Evil 6, and Mega Man 10 into a bundle with Capcom traveling bag for 60 bucks that will be on sale in just exactly under two months. Exactly under. Okay. So whatever I'm trying to say there. TNT and Steven Spielberg's successful Falling Skies series has been picked up by licensed happy publisher Little Orbit with plans to bring the game to iOS and various consoles come the holiday season. The Japanese always have had odd concepts, and one of their successful iOS creations from AtBank Games called Dungeon and golf is coming to North America. Yep, golf where the balls are monsters with special abilities being whacked by Valkyries and spiky-haired heroes. <laughs> Arena Net is rejoicing that it broke the MMO record for fastest-selling MMORPG of all time. At over 3 million in North America and Europe alone between its August launch and this last January, the game has split fans and MMO hardcore players alike, but you can try it out for yourself next weekend between August 23rd and 25th. Twitch is changing their broadcast group promises to streamline their streaming service for game consoles and phones and tablets and the like. This means they are being pretty strict with video codecs using only H.264 codec. If you're a streamer and you can't keep up with the requirements come September, well, yeah, that's it. You're you're done. <laughs> and that is not uh, a codec I don't think is very friendly to low bandwidth. No, it is not. Re not remotely. <laughs> nope. And I've already seen a couple Twitch people basically say, uh, hey guys, come September, that's it, I'm gone, because I cannot meet the requirements. So that is game news for August 17th, 2013. GamesCon has next week, so the news should be even more flamboyantly fuller and fluffier for all your officious fulfillment. Fantastic. <laughs> wow. Alliteration. So you, you were able to say that without stuttering. Yeah, I can say that, but not simple sentences. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm an odd person. <laughs> I have two hemispheres for a brain. Mm. Oh, no. Oh, two hemispheres. The right one's a little more than the left one. Yeah, it, it's kind of like when you're rowing your boat and only one of them's rowing, you know, instead of both of them at the same time. So the time and sometimes the it's, other one takes the oar and beats the other one. Well, there's that too, but I'm just trying not to share that. Thanks. It's a lot. You guys close out the show. <laughs> Bye. Bye.